Hi, today I want to show you how to get some really cool and interesting metrics about the behavior of your applications using the Opossum Circuit Breaker uh, and its Prometheus integration. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Circuit Breaker pattern, um, I encourage you to take a look at the Opossum repository here. The README has a lot of good information about how to use it, as well as a link to Martin Fowler's blog post, which is a great introduction to the concept of the Circuit Breaker pattern. It became very popular several years ago with the introdu introduction of Hystrix from Netflix. This is a node implementation of the circuit breaker pattern, and we can add it to our applications so that we uh, have more resilient, responsive applications in the event of failure. So let's get started. Uh, I have an example application here that's in the Node Shift Starters organization on GitHub in the Opossum Examples repository. Uh, and you can see there's a Prometheus folder that has a bunch of scripts that help you get going. Um, this is all based on a blog post I wrote back in December about how to monitor your Node.js applications on OpenShift using Prometheus. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do, if you'd like to follow along at home, is clone this repository. Uh, I've already done that, of course. Uh, and then uh, you want to start Minishift. I'm using Minishift for this example. Uh, it's a localized OpenShift installation that I'm running on my laptop. Uh, you'll want to do the same thing. Uh, so if you don't have Minishift installed, uh, you want to install that first. I've already got Minishift running. It takes a little while to get started, so I'm not going to show that step. I also have Prometheus already installed in my Minishift cluster, uh, but I do want to show you the steps involved in that installation. It's pretty straightforward. Um, all we need to do is create a couple of secrets. Um, this is in the install Prometheus shell script. Um, and the secrets are defined here in these YAML files. And then we uh, install the Prometheus template um, using this OC command, OC process. Uh, and that will just set up a standalone Prometheus instance in my OpenShift cluster uh, that is aware of uh, applications that are running within the cluster. So um, I've done that. Uh, let's go back to our little step-by-step -step here. And the next thing we're going to want to do is deploy the application. Before I deploy the application, I want to show you a little bit ab about how it works. So we'll go to app.js and take a look at this. Uh, it's a very basic Express um, app. Uh, and um, we are using the Opossum Circuit Breaker here. So you require the Opossum Circuit Breaker. Uh, and Opossum takes a function, something that could fail. Uh, in most cases, this is going to be a function that's probably making some remote call to a microservice, perhaps. Or it could be uh, trying to read something off of a disk, something that could potentially fail, and you want to respond uh, gracefully in the event of failure. So we pass it that function. We'll take a look at that real quick. We're not actually making a remote call here. We're just simulating failures by uh, every time the date modulo 5 is uh, equal to 0, then we return uh, a rejected promise with an error. Otherwise, we resolve with an echo of what was passed in. Uh, OK, so um, we've got our circuit now. And our API is very simple. We've got one route, API greeting, um, and it's a hello world, basically. You can send it a query parameter if you'd like, and it can say hello to whoever you send as the name. Otherwise, it'll just say hello world. Um, if the um, call to that function is successful, uh, then we just return the result, which is hello world. Uh, if it fails for whatever reason, uh, in this case because of this, uh, then uh, we uh, return the error string. Pretty straightforward. Um, the other piece of the application, the other route in the application that we need to make note of is slash metrics. This is where Prometheus expects metrics to be provided to it. Uh, and uh, we're just sending the circuit breaker metrics here uh, directly to uh, the caller uh, in response. So that's our application. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, so to deploy it, um, let's look at package.json. Uh, we uh, have a little deploy script in our package.json, uh, and it's using uh, the node shift uh, module, or uh, yeah, the node shift npm module, to deploy the application to the OpenShift instance that I'm currently logged into, in this case, Minishift on my laptop. Uh, and um, it's a great little module to help node developers uh, get their apps up and running quickly and easily on OpenShift. So let's do that. Go over here to my terminal. And npm run deploy. Uh, 
and you can see that it's creating a build configuration for us using uh, the S2I build procedures uh, and uploads the binary archive of our application, basically the uh, JS files. Uh, and then <clears throat> it installs the application source, runs npm install, and this is all happening on a container uh, within my OpenShift cluster. And now it's pushing that container into the OpenShift instance. Push was successful and our application should be deployed. So I can run Minishift console uh, and that should open up the uh, console in my browser and I can go to my project here and I can see that I have Prometheus installed. Let's make this bigger. I have Prometheus installed here and my application express Prometheus Minishift and you can see the route to it right here. But this route doesn't actually point to the um, API. So let's go back here and we can run an or a little shell script called get app url.sh uh, and this just queries uh, the um, OpenShift instance to get the URLs for our application as well as the metrics of the application and the Prometheus server itself. So let's take a look at each of those things. Uh, here's the application calling slash API greeting um, and we can see it just says uh, hello world and I can reload this and oh we got a random failure hello world again well random failure too now the circuit breaker is open now it's closed again because we have a pretty short timeout on our circuit breaker it, it closes pretty quickly uh, we can also look at the metrics so we can take a look at metrics here and we can this is just the raw uh, data format for um, Prometheus uh, so we've got the name of our metric in this case circuit underscore the name of the function uh, and then process CPU user seconds total which is an internal uh, node metric um, all right and then now let's take a look at the Prometheus instance. So here's our Prometheus instance uh, and we can take a look at something like how many times the function was executed uh, and it was executed 11 times just in the last little bit here. Uh, we can see a graph of that, nothing, no activity, no activity and now some activity all in the last one hour. Let's bring this down to about mm, one minute. Uh, now we can run a benchmarking test just to get some data in there. Uh, what this is doing is running the uh, AB stress test tool um, against the application. And let's go take a look at that script real quick. Uh, so it gets the URL for the API uh, and um, iterates over that URL 60 times uh, once per second for a minute uh, sending 1000 requests with 100 of them concurrent. Okay so we're hitting it with a, a quite a number of requests it's still running but we can go back here now to our Prometheus instance and execute that again and we can see now that you know the 11 that we had a minute ago is you know kind of basically looks like zero here because we've got so many requests now, uh, you know, several thousand, 8,572, 18,011. If we execute it again, we should see that number continue. Uh, and there's a lot of information that you can get here uh, out of um, Prometheus for that single circuit. So this is, these are all of the metrics for that one function call. So we can see how many times uh, that circuit opened. Uh, it looks like it opened six times during that run. Yep, six times. Uh, we can see how many times uh, it closed. Should have closed a number of times. Yep, six as well. Um, we can see how many times it failed, which is probably a lot. Mm, about 5,000 times, four and a half thousand, something like that. And uh, we can see how many times, we can see like some of the Node.js uh, internal data like event loop lag, for example. And we can see how that lag, we're coming down now from our, our stress test. Let's increase the duration here a bit. 
So we can see how uh, the event loop lag increased quite a bit, <laughs> all the way to two one hundredths of a second. Uh, we can look at uh, how much memory uh, we have in the system. Heap size used. Lots of metrics here. And you can feed this data into uh, graphing programs and things like that, uh, for example, Kiali. Uh, so uh, there you have it, um, uh, Node.js circuit breaker uh, running in an express application feeding uh, Node metrics about the uh, circuit itself as well as Node internals directly to Prometheus. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you have any comments about this, please feel free to open up an issue on the Opossum Examples repository right here. And I'll see you next time.